The world is a better place if every child on earth loves learning and enjoys mathematics. This is an obsession with my, of mine. I, I live my life and my mission in life is in an ideal world, every child on earth would love learning and enjoy mathematics. Do you know anyone that is that has a problem with maths, whether it's a grown up a child or has a problem with fierce maths? Um, just it could, it could be fear, it can be hate. Fear and hate are kind of intertwined, but if you know anybody that either fears or hates maths or just has a problem with it, then then you are the person I'm talking to. So my name's Caroline, Caroline Ainsley, and I um, have a confession. I'm the, the founder and CEO of Bubbly Maths, and our mission is that every child on earth will love learning and enjoy mathematics. So people introduce me saying, this is Caroline, she's a genius at maths. Well, the fact is, don't tell anyone, but I'm really bad at maths. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, so I make mistakes constantly. The numbers go all over the place. I look at a formula and I think I've got it right and then everything's twisted around and I put a plus where I should put a minus and I, and I don't balance it and, and oh, my, I don't know my times tables. That's being remedied. These lives that I'm doing at the moment are remedying that because <laughs> I'm having to, I'm in the process of working out a program to help um, people with maths at home to learn their times tables. So that means I have to learn my times tables. I will learn my times tables, yes. Um, but the reason why I haven't so far don't know my times tables, I've not actually dedicated the time to learning them, but I, I do struggle with maths. So the people that I resonate, I feel for the people that struggle with maths. What differentiates me from, from those people that actually fail at maths or get disengaged with maths is a stroke of luck. Now, when I was, or throughout, throughout my whole school career, I don't remember that much. I, I did quite okay at maths in one respect, but I was always, oh, Caroline, you made another silly mistake. Or um, I couldn't, I had to go to remedial class. Now that was, that was for me, that was a bit of a pit. I, um, I always wanted to do well in, in exams, but never got full marks or very rarely got full marks because I always made the silly mistakes. And the numbers were just uh, they'd be talking about one thing and it wouldn't make any sense to me. I just wouldn't make any sense. And then, and I, and I thought I was looking at something and then I'd be looking at it and actually later on I'd look at it and somebody would point it out and I'm like, oh, is that what it said all along? It's not what I saw. So um, I was just super lucky because I think it's because we played games at home, actually. We played card games. We played all kinds of games at home. It was a huge thing with us. We we had a television part of my childhood, but we didn't watch it that much. The thing we did was play games with, with each other, with my brothers, and then my grandpa was the one that really got us into that. But I always viewed maths as a puzzle, as a game. And thanks to that... Even though I struggled with maths and even though there are concepts in maths that, that to this day I really just don't understand, I was, because I view maths as a puzzle, a puzzle that I, that I find a difficult thing to solve, but I, I do persevere until I solve it, because I had that attitude. I was actually able to get a degree in electronic engineering. Now you can't get a degree in electronic engineering and not be able to do maths. So, but on the other hand, I did struggle with it. Now my, I've, got, I've got nieces that got disengaged from maths when they were about, the two of them got disengaged when they were about seven in, in each in turn. And I've got, um, I know of children that became disengaged in maths and it's like, you can't talk to them. You cannot even mention maths. They're like, do not talk to me about maths. I couldn't help my own nieces. And then, 
and then the lucky ones maybe get a teacher who spends that time with them or has an, has an approach that, that helps them get out of it. But some of them, some people just never do, spend their whole lives. As Wendy, who's, who's commenting here, that, that she feels she's rubbish. Actually, she's quite good. She's really good at that mental arithmetic. You can't pull a fast one on Wendy. Um, and unlike me, you can pull a fast one on me because when I'm put on the spot, it all goes completely wrong. So, um, so what I, for the last 15 years, I've been running Bubbly Mass. It was actually, it was an epiphany 16 years ago. It was like I got hit by a, by a, a, a lightning bolt and I got a message from on high because I, for all the years, I was 42 when it happened. So yes, 42 is in fact the answer to life, the universe and everything. I am witness to that. And um, and what what it hit what hit me was I I worked I was given my purpose in life my purpose in life because I had been hearing reporters talk about um, talk about how uh, people were kids were leaving school failing in maths that there were grown ups out in the world that couldn't do maths so I, I it was like there was a big thing on going on about it or maybe I was just tuned into it and I was just getting more and more incensed about it until one day I decided I have to do something about it I cannot just stand by and and let this happen anymore so I um I went to the library I inquired how I could help I was thinking helping adults with numeracy problems and then I had another um, lightning bolt moment and that lightning bolt moment was um, at uh, that I sold an item to a clown on eBay and and then I was like ooh a clown ooh I got very excited because personally I love clowns I don't go to the circus to see the aerial acts they scare me I'm like I don't want them to get hurt I, but I love the clowns the clowns I just love the clowns they make me laugh that's what I want I want their laughter and and that feeling of 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 connection and and love so I thought oh so if I entertain these if I do some entertaining at the time I, I decided that, that clowning was what I was going to do and then I track the children to the fun and do maths with them and make it fun that is what I'm going to do so that was what I did and and that was I started 15 years ago with that and of course, the first thing I had to do was first get some skills on entertaining because you, well, I didn't have any skills on how to entertain. Um, and a, a, another clown told me, well, you have to learn how to balloon model and face paint. And I was like, mm -hmm. what does balloon modeling and face painting got to do with, with entertaining people? And I hadn't found any other courses or anything. So I thought, well, OK, well, I, that sounds like fun. I went ahead and did that. Now, balloon mod, uh, face painting, I wasn't very good at. I didn't didn't call me but balloon modeling I loved I really loved balloon modeling and before I, I actually embarked on my journey before I ever went to my first school to do to make maths fun I had actually won an award already at that point in, in doing in balloons so um, what I did then was I was I went to my very first clown convention and at that clown convention went to a session on clowning in schools which one would when one wants to learn how to um, help children to um, overcome their fear of maths, to become better at maths, just to generally help with maths. So I went to a session on clowning in schools and this lovely lady stood up and she said, let me just do it. She just literally stood up in the room with all these other, well, the people, they were all clowns. She said, my name is Hattie Maths. I am a maths clown and I want to retire, but I can't find anyone to train up to take over from me. Well, so that was her, and now I'm over here, kind of behind over here, and I'm like, oh, me, 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 me. I think I probably actually did that. I think I probably, knowing me, I probably did that and just stood up and just went all a bit bonkers and embarrassed everybody, which is something I do. So there you go. So, so fortunately for me, and Hattie was, turns out, was a proper qualified maths consultant with a master's in, 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 in facilitating the learning of mathematics and in, in, you know, mathematical learning. And, 
and she was an expert in mathematical thinking, in other words, how we process maths, how we think about maths and the best way to facilitate learning it. Now, that was my start in actually going to schools. She, she got me started, she trained me and then I started going into schools. And the balloons come in because the very first maths conference I went, that was a clown convention, then I went to maths conference and it was for teachers. Um, and I went to that and they were doing origami well. So I seem to have some element of dyscalculia. I certainly have some element of dyslexia. And it would seem that I also have um, dyspraxia, the one where you, uh, coordination. I've never had good coordination. It took me years to learn. Well, I ne I, let me see, how many years was it? 2005 was my first person that said, oh, I can teach you how to juggle because I wanted to clown. And then 2000 and eight I met I actually um fell in love with a, a clown and he was a juggler and I say was because um, he died a couple of years ago which oh, I have to have to dyspraxia thank you Wendy um just just take a moment to breathe because he passed away a couple of years ago unexpectedly so so the thing was that he dedicated a whole year, well, not a whole year, but every time I lived in London, he lived in Copenhagen, every time I went over, he would watch me, he'd watch me juggle, and it took a whole year. Now I've got to show you this. Now that I've got, I'm going to, sh going to show you what it took a whole year for me to learn how to do. Three juggling balls. Hold on, need a bit more space here. Three juggling balls. One year to be able to do this. And I haven't been practicing. I really should at least keep this one skill going. One year. Ready? Okay, I've got to wait. take off my glasses. I've got to look up there. Here we go. And sort of looking up there. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> be able to throw three balls in the air and catch them again. Took me a whole year. So... What was the point of that point? What was I don't even know where I was going with that. Anyway, um, oh yes, folding paper, origami, not my thing. So I literally, I was, well, okay, so I wasn't actually pulling my hair out, but I felt like pulling my hair out, doing a session on origami. And then I thought, wait a minute, I've got my balloons in the car. Let me go out and get my balloons out. And instead of making geometrical shapes with, with, with paper started making them with balloons oh boy we had the best time me and my lovely friend Claire that I made friends with that day because we were attempting to make this massive great big balloon shape that was all made out of pentagons so we, we proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that a pentagon is not a stable shape nice triangles there, nice and stable a pentagon goes Bleh. and um so we just had a great time and that was when adding balloons into bubbly maths came about. So since then, it's been a, a progression. We do workshops and shows in schools. We use normal materials as well, um, paper and sticky tape and, and, pe and string and all of that, pencils and rulers and all of that. But our entertainment is through is using soap bubbles and balloons with a stage. I've got an award-winning stage show. Can you believe it? This crazy woman that turned her life around. And we don't, I don't, I clown, still clown, but I don't call myself a clown anymore because we had that disaster of, um, with the, the killer clown scare, which it wasn't, they weren't clowns. There were people putting clown costumes on, scary clown costumes. They weren't clowns, there was not a single clown involved. And um, so, it, it, so yes, so I no longer actually call myself a clown. I don't put face on or anything like that. But I do clown. I fool around. I f fool around, is that the right word? <laughs> clown around. I, 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 I make mistakes. I celebrate mistakes. I don't make mistakes anyway. I make magnificent mistakes because I learn from them. And we have lots of lovely things like that, which will all be part of the program. So, um, just um, so this session has just been a little bit to, to 
if you didn't see it and you, you want to review it, please do watch again. Um, but the um, what the the idea was to just let you know why I do what I do, and it's all about finding people that have difficulty with maths, whether it be the parents struggling with the children at home. Like at the moment, like everyone's working at home, but the um, even when we don't have this extraordinary situation that we're in, um, people have struggle. I know they do and I've been wanting to remedy or help provide something to help remedy that problem for many years and so this is forcing the issue so I'm, I'm, that's happening, that's being created as we speak and I, I'm not, it's not about tutoring, it's not about um, actual salt working with individual mathematical problems it's about the attitude it's about the mindset that's my role because my I discovered that what I'm here for my purpose in life is that every child on earth should love learning and enjoy mathematics that is my mission now it probably won't happen in my lifetime but the idea is that bubbly mass will still be here with that mission and working with other people we're one of the ambassadors of the global math project and working with other people all around the world um, I do believe that it that it will have there's no reason why it shouldn't happen there is no reason why it shouldn't happen it does involve governments making changes in the way they expect people to learn mathematics and it involves changes in the way teachers are taught to are trained to teach mathematics and um, and and modifying things for the future because the 21st century we've, we've education has been fairly static for the last at least 150 years nearly I'm not quite sure when public education really no because even the the, the expensive education for, for rich people was still was very very rigid and or has been since school started um, so that changes are required and bubbly maths want to be part of that so what I'd love for you to do is to leave comments to let me know, connect, to connect people with Bubbly Mass that, that you know have problems, um, would be, um, appreciate um, the lives that we're doing. We're doing lives every day on the group, so it's Making Maths Fun for Kids of All Ages is one of the Bubbly Maths groups. We're doing lives on that, they're being shared on here every day and we've got guests speakers we've had the lovely james tanton who founded the global math project we've got um who's on again on thursday he did um what he calls exploding dots it's basically how numbers work um how they why we write numbers the way we write numbers basically and and then he's coming again on thursday with fractions and steve this is thursday evenings um yeah, in the evenings and then friday we've got steve sherman from living maths who does who does lateral thinking challenges and he also uh, coordinates one of the mass olympiads and and what else we just we'll have guest speakers now we'll do a live every morning on on making mass fun for kids of all ages at nine and that's that's an evolving um live i'm getting feedback from parents and what it seems would be really useful is to have maybe 10 minutes literally 10 minutes for early learners and then another 10 minutes with, followed by a little segment a small segment just to speak to the parents to leave them with the active so it's something that, that the young ones can look at and maybe do some and then do an activity for the parents to continue with that and then do a separate live maybe five minutes later for older learners rather than do one live that combines them all can make separate lives so that's what um please do share um let tell people about bubbly mass tell people about the lives that we're doing and the um, the program that we're, that'll just that'll come out in the wash. You'll know about that if you stay connected to us. So please do stay connected. Please do comment if you've got any requests, or or you can connect us to anybody that we might be able to help. Thank you for joining. Wow, no.
here we go. Um, so Wendy's been on, I think, the whole time. Andy, thank you for joining. My cousin Rod has been on. It's his grandson that I've been working with um, every morning. So he was, he was a bit poorly today, so he didn't come on today. So love to Ray, Rod, if you're still here. Torben, good afternoon. Torben, he's in Denmark. He was a friend of my lovely Yulius, my partner that died. And, um, and Christine McGough, if you're still here. Thank you so much for joining. It's always good to see you. She's my English teacher. So hopefully I'm doing her proud. Thank you very much. You have a good evening.